One thing that you need to know right off the bat is that anytime you have floated items inside of another section, like, and literally in this case, it's articles that are floated inside of sections, then the parent container has to have a special rule for an overflow so that it hides overflow. And there's no way you're going to know that um, right off the bat. It's just something you have to learn, and, and I'm teaching you that now. So there's no way that you could have necessarily just guessed that without knowing a whole lot more. But I'm going to tell you about that. So I'm going to come up here inside the section, and I'm going to paste something. And basically, it's the property of overflow, and the value is set to hidden. And then I just put a note that's commented out here. And it says, set this because this element contains floated elements. And see article rules below. OK? So now if I hit Save, let's go back here and refresh the page again. And now you see that the footer is doing what it's supposed to do. It goes down to the bottom. All is right with the world. Now, the other thing that you could do on some browser windows, you might end up with a problem where the footer, for whatever reason, wants to get sucked up to the side. If you were really concerned about that, then you could come down here on the footer, and you could also add the clear property, and you could say clear left. But we're not having that problem, but in the event that you should have it, and I'll refresh, make sure everything still looks good, then you will know that, that the footer will definitely clear everything. And so now we've got this basic layout where we have our heading up here, our header, I should say, and then we have this article that has a, it's called the whole class that's as assigned to it, whole being W-H-O-L-E, means it takes up the whole block um, minus its margins. And then we have another section here that's got some articles, and that section is called thirds, and it means that it's going to divide everything into thirds and float it. All right, and then these are also the thirds. And if you don't want this gray background down here, then there's something else that we can do in the CSS. And let's do this. We'll come down under footer. And I'm going to create a rule that is specific to the section who's got a transparent class assigned to it. So it could be, I could say footer section or like that. But if I want it to apply to anything that is a section with the transparent class assigned to it. I don't want to add the specificity of footer. So we're saying any article that is inside of a section whose class is transparent, we're going to make the background transparent. And it's really, really important that you put this at the bottom of the page so that it overrides the defaults of these background colors for these articles. OK, so let's go ahead and hit Save. And if, like I said, if you wanted, you could put the word footer here with a space, and it would be very specific. So I'm going to save this, and let's just double check the HTML. And inside the HTML, you'll see that the footer has a section with the class of thirds, which will still give it the spacing that we want, and who's uh, also got a class called transparent assigned to it. So you can do two classes like that, just with a space in between them. OK, so let's save that. Let's hit Refresh over here. And then if I scroll down, you'll see that now I don't have those goofy background colors. So now what we should look at doing is trying to establish some styles for some of these uh, H2s and you know the paragraph text and, and so forth. Also, these links are horrible. This blue on black is not is not a good look. So maybe that'll be the first thing that we address is the color of the link. So let's go back over into our HTML, and then we'll jump back into our CSS, actually. And before we do anything, let's just go ahead right up at the top. And I'm going to first establish, I like to establish uh, sections where I've got, you know, the basic overall, you know, tag or, you know, HTML element rules and then get to more specific things. So up here we've got header and so forth. But let's go ahead and put up under the body, I'm going to paste in some rules for the A's, uh, for A tags. And the reason I want to do that is because um, 
these are things that are going to affect the entire page, at least as of now. Um, so all I did was I said for the A tag, um, we're going to make the color this color. It's sort of like a, I think, a greenish color. And then no text decoration, so no underline. And then on the hover, we're going to change it so it's sort of like a green color, or uh, I think like an orange color. And then uh, text decoration is going to have an underline when you hover over it. So let's just save that real quick. And let's do a refresh and see what happens. And then we go from green to sort of this coral orangey color. And that's a little bit better. It's easier to read. Really simple. And I like to go ahead and do the majority of my basic styling before I get to doing the media query. So let's go ahead and run through some of those things real quick. And now I've got, uh, let's go ahead and look here and let's fix our H1 right off the bat. And there's some issues that I've got with that. So let's move into the H1 for header H1 and we'll paste some stuff. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm changing, I'm being really specific about the font size because right now it's just taking the generic size that the browser is giving it. And then additionally, I'm changing the, um, or making sure that the font family is correct and I'm changing the weight of it. So let's save that, make sure that looks okay. Hit refresh and you can see that that's a little bit bigger. Okay. And actually, let's jump back over here and let's look at our articles for the, or the heading level two for the articles. Notice how this article is not lining up with the H1. And no matter what we do to change the dimension here, it isn't quite right. So let's adjust that and let's see what we can do. Oh, but before we do that, actually, if I don't want this to be my point size or my uh, weight, font weight, and I, maybe I don't even want it to be my actual font, then I should change the font before I start adjusting the margin because that might affect it a little bit. So. Let's go down in here and let's just go ahead and say that we're going to create something, a rule that is true of all section articles so that we have an H2 for all section articles. It has nothing to do with whether or not it's for the whole or for the thirds, it's for any article that's inside of section. So I'm gonna give it a font size and actually let's, we don't need to tab those in so much. Uh, we're going to give it a font size of 2M. I'm going to change the font family to Muley, which is uh, one that that um, I had specified in my Google fonts, and we'll give it a font weight of 300. So let's just start there. Okay, save that, hit refresh, and you see it's like a little bit lighter and um, more delicate. And now that the font has changed, I'm really noticing the difference between the justification or the, the margin between this H and the A now, so uh, it's even more obvious than it was before. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to adjust this, and I wanna show you something that you might experience, and it depends also on the browser. Notice that the, let's go back up to the top actually. Notice that the um, A here is really out of line now that we changed it with uh, the H1, and I wanna show you how you can adjust this. And one of the things that you're gonna realize whenever we start to adjust this is that, depending on the browser that you're using, the um, rule can cascade through the whole page or it might stop. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if we go back over here, so H2's in, in an article that's in a section, let's just see what happens if we add margin, let's say, I don't know, 3%. Let's, yeah, three, let's try 3%. Let's just save that, come over here, refresh. And you notice that it's only working up here on the whole class. It's not working on the thirds class. Um, so margin in this case is one that for this browser is not cascading through. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a special rule. Let me copy this. And I could create it right here on line 44, but I think what I'd like to do is since I'm going to have to give it a level of specificity sort of like this one, what I'd like to do then is come down below where these are created for the whole and for the thirds. And uh, I'd like to go ahead and create them uh, underneath each section. So if I give this one uh, some specificity and I say section dot whole like this, all right, 
then what I can tell this one to have is a margin of 3%. And now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make another one for the thirds article for the H2. And instead of whole, we're going to change this to the word thirds. And let's just see what happens if we leave it also at 3%. Okay. I'm going to save that, hit refresh. Okay, and you notice that now it is working technically. Like this is basically, I don't want it to be perfectly in line with this H1. I want it to be slightly inset because I think it looks a little bit better. But you'll notice that this one over here is is not in line. It The one for the article with the thirds class. And the reason is because if we're doing it as a percent, it's a percentage of its parent dimension. Well, the whole class is taking up 95% total of the viewport. So 3% of 95% is much greater than 3% of, say, 28%, right? So we need to make an adjustment. And then for this thirds article, we need to tell the H2s to be slightly larger percentage for margin. So instead of 3%, let's see what happens with 10%. Let's hit refresh. And that looks a lot better. Um, and if you wanted to check it, you could do something like open up a new, let's say, let's take our calculator for instance, and we can line it up so that we're looking at a straight line up and down. And then we can see for a fact that these are pretty much in line. Even if we start to scale them like this, we want to check as we scale them, are they pretty much staying in line? And yeah, pretty much they're staying in line. Okay, so that's one of the things that you can check on. Now, we also want the paragraphs to be in line as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to create uh, additional rules. Let's just copy this much. And then I'm going to make a grouped rule. And then instead of H2, I'm going to put P at the end. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Okay, let's copy that. I'm going to make a grouped rule. And this way, I'm going to have both the paragraph and the H2 inside of the article, right, who is in the section with the class of whole assigned to it, okay? And the same is going to be true for the one with the thirds. So we'll say hit save, go back here, hit refresh. And then now you start to see something that looks a little bit nicer, and it's they're all lining up. And no matter what we do, they're keeping their percentages, which is great. Okay, so we've got that part accomplished. Real quick, though, I want to go back and I want to look at the very bottom. Something I realized that we haven't done is we haven't dealt with these links down here. You might not care about the bullets. I don't care for them so much. So I'm going to come down to the bottom. I'm going to create a new rule for the footer list item. And... I'm going to create the list style type of none, and I'm going to give it a line height of 2m. So I'm going to save that, and let's hit refresh over here. And you can see what happens is that I get a better line height, and I get no bullets, but now the margin's off a little bit. Let's take a look at something else that we can do really quickly. I want you to notice, and we've discussed this before, one of the things that happened since we didn't use a reset is that the unordered list, by default, um, is getting a, a browser style applied to it where it has a padding on the left of a mm, 20 to 40 pixels. So I'm going to hit padding and we're going to say zero for the footer UL. Let's save that, hit refresh, and you notice that it bumps it all the way over here. Well, the reason it's not lined up anymore with article is because article, if you remember, uh, on the H2, I shouldn't say article, I should say H2, uh, is it has a margin on the thirds section right here of 10%. Okay, that's what we actually want. So I'm going to copy that. Now that we've basically set the unordered list, reset it back to zero, and removed that hidden style that the browser's applying, I can go ahead and give it a 10% margin, save that, hit refresh, and now they're lining up perfectly. So 
We're going to stop this demo, and then the next one is where we're going to start talking about media queries and how you can change it so that when you do stuff like this, it doesn't do weird things like what you're seeing on the screen now.